Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this Lumen Monster that we have right here in my hand. This is the Streamlight Railmount HLX. So the HLX stands for, I don't know, Extreme or something like it's 1995. But uh, what it actually is, is it's a 1000 lumen weapon light here that takes any of the scout mounts out there. It also has other mounting options that we'll get into later on here in the video. But I know a lot of folks have been excited for this one. Uh, I think they announced it at SHOT 2017. I actually played with one of their prototypes out there. But they've been out shipping now for probably about a month. I've had mine uh, in my hands for about that while. And we've took it out to the range a few times, as you guys have seen there in the intro. But what we're going to do now is actually let the dogs take a look at it first, make sure they approve of it as always. Then we're going to do some uh, low light beam comparisons with a couple competitive options out there on the market. Come back in, take a look at the features of it, what you can expect with this light, and at the end we'll wrap it up with what I think of it overall. The light you see right now is coming from the Protec HLX. You can see they're very, very bright. If I turn this light off, uh, my camera is on manual, so it will not auto adjust. You'll see it is pretty much dark out here. You can barely see anything. And again, with that light on there, the edge of that fence right there is probably 30, 35 feet away, and it's lit up nice and white. It has a nice hot spot there. It does have an edge on the beam. Uh, you can see a little bit better. Um, outside of the edge in person than you guys are actually seeing there on camera. But that is how the beam pattern stacks up. Now, for comparison's sake, here we have the Surefire. This is the uh, Scout 600 series. You can see there, again, very nice hot spot. We'll compare it to the HLX. You can see that HLX is a little bit more intense in the middle than the Scout over here on the right. Um, but both of them are going to give you a real good output. The Surefire spill is a little bit wider um, but of course it does still have an edge too as well as you guys can see there, but the HLX definitely brighter, um, again, comparing them side by side. Once again, we are blacked out and here is the Streamlight TLR1 HL that we reviewed before, 800 lumen weapon mounted light. It's generally designed for pistols, but sure, plenty of people do run it on the rifles. You can see a definite beam pattern difference here. You can see there's not as much of an edge. There's a little bit more spill there with this light on my camera focus again. You can see that spill sort of illuminating the fence even as we go away from it. Whereas with the HLX here, there's that definite edge that you get. So not sure if that's important to you guys or not, but now you know what the beam patterns look like and the intensity. So we checked out the beam pattern. Now we're gonna check out this pile of stuff here in front of you. What you have here is everything that comes with the light as it comes uh, from the box. So you get a ton of different accessories with this light that for other brands you have to pay extra for. So I do think that's cool with the rail mount series. So we have our light of course with our standard 1913 mount. We have our tail cap. The tail cap here is kind of cool because you can uh, set it up to engage either momentary or this one here clicks it for constant on. So you have the option uh, of how you want to run it built into the switch which I think is pretty cool. You get these two or four rather, I should say, two short, two long uh, straps here to tie down uh, if you want to zip tie your cords down so that way it's not going to get caught on stuff. So you can zip tie it down to your rail. I do like that system. And then we get this little system here which mounts to your uh, 1913 style rail. So basically how it works is you just slide it in under there. First, of course, you'd want to mount these on your uh, actual 1913 style rail. Then you slide this end in. If we can actually do it here on camera like that and it's pretty tight which is good you want it to be that way so and then this would be our 1913 rail and there you have it so that would be your constant on and off and then your momentary here with that little button getting into the light itself we do have a relatively wide bezel there so it's a little bit wider than like the surefire scouts let's say uh, and it also has a very deep reflector that's what gave you that really bright hot spot that you guys were seeing out there and on that note i guess we just want to sort of uh, do a quick comparison because one big difference between the main competitor for this light which of course in my opinion is this light right here which is the surefire scout um, is candela so there's a ton of different differences um, but candela is going to be one of them this right here the, the scout 600 is going to give you about 13 thousand candela. Um, then the Protec here, HLX, is going to give you at peak 
27,600 candela. That's that's a lot of light focused in one area. For those who don't know what candela is, that is that is what it is. It's the, the maximum amount of light measured in one area that comes out of the light. So you can have equal lumens and you can have completely different candela. And what that candela tells you uh, as a consumer out there basically is what kind of throw you're actually going to get. So how far that beam will actually go. Streamlight here says that this light is rated out to 330 meters. Now, as I've said here in the past, and I'll, I'll stand by, generally speaking, you can cut that number in half for realistic engagements. So like if you were going to use it for hunting, you could identify and shoot a hog at, say, with this particular light, probably 150, 175 meters. With this one here, um, of course, getting about half, you could probably say 100 meters ish. So that extra throw and extra intensity you're getting out of the ProTac is one of the big differences. Of course, Streamlight, or Surefire rather, I should say, is a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter. Um, the actual ProTac here is going to come in at 6.4 ounces, whereas the Surefire here is going to come in at, I believe, 5.8 off the top of my head. And you can see the difference in the bezel size there. But anyway, I just want to mention that, not do an actual comparison, but that is one of the bigger differences between the lights because I know folks are going to ask that. Continuing to move back, you can see the entire body as well as the tail cap is made of aircraft grade aluminum. It has a nice anodizing all the way around. We have those little cooling fins here up front, but of course it still has that hot warning on there because these lights will get hot when you leave them on for extended periods of time. Uh, moving back. Like I said, we have the 1913 mount that we mentioned earlier, and what you see in there, those two little heel coils, and that's so that it can run on any sort of scout mount. So if you have a Surefire scout mount out there um, that's compatible with those, whether it be Keymod, MWOC, 1913, whatever the case may be, it will work on these lights. And I also like the fact that it has the heel coils because those are, uh, you know, much stronger in terms of uh, the system overall rather than just having it milled out into the aluminum. So it gives you a little bit of extra strength and protection for your mounting surface. On the tail cap here, you can see we have good knurling all the way around. It's not too aggressive, but it's certainly enough to let you take the tail cap off if you want to change the batteries, which is probably the primary purpose of it, I would imagine. So the actual button here itself is recessed, and you can, if my surface here is flat, you can tail cap stand it for those wondering. So it is flat, and you have the recessed button to protect it from being pushed accidentally um, when it's mounted up on your rifle. So basic operation here, the button is you can press in a little bit, and you will get some light coming out the end. Um, and then if you want to actually have it have constant on, you just press it and it will stay constant on. Now, it does have the 10 tap program programmable system here. Basically, there's three different modes that you can set the light up in. It comes, as you just saw there, set up with the high strobe function. So if you tap the light quickly, it will go into strobe. If you let off and then go back in, it will always come back in on high. So you can have that as your setting and just leave it as it comes from the factory or you can program it so that way it will be in high only. Um, and then the other option there, the third option for this particular light is low than high. And low on this light is 60 lumens. So you're going to go down there and extend your battery time a good bit. Now speaking of battery time on high, the constant runtime for this light is I believe 1.25 hours. And then on low, you're looking, depending on which battery you're using, you're looking at 20 to 22 hours uh, of constant on use on low. So those are the options out there. But it's funny to think that this light here, the low setting is 60 lumens, and probably, what, 10 years ago, that was like the highest settings that you were going to find on any weapon light. So in terms of output, we've certainly come a long way. Another thing I wanted to point out about these lights, of course, is the batteries. So they do come with two CR123 batteries, and that is how you take them out there. They are Streamlight branded batteries. And I should also point out while we have it apart that the O-ring here is sealed all the way around and the threads there are lubricated as you would expect and want them to be. We also have the uh, spring here in the back, which is going to prevent the light from flickering under recoil. Um, I've probably rolled in a few shots of me actually shooting this light on a weapon so far and as you can see there's no flickering at all at least not on the 556 caliber rifles. But one thing you do get with the tail cap and that o-ring seal in there is that you do get an ipx7 rating which basically means in terms of waterproofness that you can submerge the light for uh, 30 minutes in one meter of water and you can expect it to stay operating without issue and have no um, ill effects on the light itself now if you actually go with the tail switch here the tape switch um, you will only have ipx4 rating and ipx4 um, without going into all the details is basically rain right so if you're out, uh, hunting or if you're on like a military law enforcement type mission out in the rain, uh, you're only going to get IPX4 here with the tape switch, or you're going to get 7, which is absolute submersion down to one meter. Um, 
systems. That's just one difference, one thing to note. But what I was actually getting at here earlier without going off on that tangent is that uh, the two CR123 batteries are standard. However, it does take 18650 batteries. So you can use one of those to power the light um, and it will work just fine with that. Streamlight calls it their dual fuel battery capability. I know a lot of folks out there really like that. Um, but one thing I've said here in the past and I'll, I'll still stand by is that if you're gonna use this on a weapon light for an actual like home defense type scenario where your life might depend on it, I recommend getting the two CR123s. The reason for that is, um, well, there's many reasons, but the 18650s, when they die, they tend to just die. And um, you'll have to recharge them and you won't know that it's coming. Whereas with the two CR123s, the light will start to dim and it will give you sort of a, a warning and a little bit of time to actually change them out. Um, for when you may need them in a scenario later on. But for training, absolutely, 18650s are fine, save you some money. Uh, I think that's a great idea and a great feature that this light offers. We hit most of the features of the light, but of course one that's always important is gonna be price. Streamlight does a great job in that category because they are relatively durable weapon lights and they come in at a pretty affordable price point. These ones here, this one here I should say, comes in right at $111 shipped online. That's the cheapest I could find it looking around today. Um, who knows, the feature may be less, maybe more. But I think for a weapon light with the kind of output that this one has, and of course Streamlight's brand and customer service behind it, I think you're getting a lot of light for the money. So speaking of a lot of light, in my uh, Rail Mount 2 review that I did a few months ago, I guess probably almost a year ago now, um, one thing a lot of people said, because that was a relatively high output light, is that it's too much light for indoors. Okay, so uh, this is one of those things that's kind of been around for a while, and I've said I've never found that to be the case. I've said that with every review I've done of any high output light, and this one here is no exception. So in this particular room I'm standing in now, we have light blue walls. The majority of my house, though, for those who watch my Facebook Live videos, uh, you will know that the majority of the walls in my house are white. Um, I have never, even coming out of a dark room after being in there for a while, been blinded by a light. Now, there's two reasons you could be blinded by a light, and number one, it's just improper technique. That's the biggest reason, i.e. you're splashing it at a wall that's three feet in front of you and looking directly into the cone. That could cause perhaps some temporary blindness, but of course technique matters as much as anything else. It's a software issue, in my opinion, for most folks, rather than a hardware issue. So do you need all those lemons? No, absolutely not. Uh, are they nice to have? They can be sometimes. Um, so. That's one thing to consider. Also, one thing to consider on this is the beam pattern like we talked about earlier. This one here is a little bit more focused than some of the other lights out there on the market, um, which will give you a little bit more broader beam pattern. So it may be better for, let's say, coyote hunting or something like that, and a little bit less optimal for, say, room clearing, which you might want a little bit more of spread for, but it would certainly do well with both. So one thing that out there looking at my fence in my backyard that you guys can't see is if I turn this on in the room right, ne room right now, rather, and pointed it at the door, which is to my right, um, Basically, I'd be able to see the door, but because there's so much light coming out in one particular area, um, the whole room is illuminated and you absolutely can see all around you. So that's not too much of an issue in a room, but something to keep in mind as well. So um, the whole Lumens versus Lux versus Candela thing, I really need to do a video on it because one thing I want to point out, and it's just an example, but it helps sort of bring this into perspective for people who think the whole it's too many lumens thing is a thing. Um, a 75 watt light bulb is I think 1100 lumens. Um, so, you know, you're obviously not gonna be blinded by that. So it really depends how those lumens are focused and um, what the output actually looks like. It has a lot to do with the reflector and other factors that go into the light. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox with that. <laughs> but that's about it guys. I think we hit all the points I needed to and I don't need to drag the video on any longer. If you have any comments or questions, you can always post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page, which is generally the best way to get in touch with me. I don't always see your comments here on YouTube uh, or over on Full30, but I do see them, at least I think I do, on Facebook. So thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you're a new viewer here and you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And we hope to see you in the next video.